Welcome to Culture Coach, a podcast with me, Nikki Lerner, helping you to engage in a proactive movement towards unity and understanding as it relates to culture and come from. Thanks for joining me today. You ready to go? Let's get started. Today, I want to talk a little bit about specifically how white American men, uh, in particular, can engage in the cultural conversation, okay? Uh, You know here at the Culture Coach Podcast that uh, oftentimes, you know, we are not about singling out a particular people group, but what we are trying to do is to help you uh, and help leaders make as much room for as many different kinds of people as possible uh, in our businesses, in our organizations, in your personal life whatever that is. And so it's not oftentimes that I single out a particular group of people, but today I think this is really important uh, for those of you who listen to me, and I know that there are lots of you that listen to me that are white American men. uh, This podcast episode is really curated for you uh, to help you be awesome uh, at work, at home, uh, no matter where you are in your attempt uh, and your uh, goal to become better cross-culturally, right? So a lot of times, um, I think particularly in these last couple of years, I would say uh, particularly ever since the summer of 2020, uh, you know, we, we have been moving towards, trying to move towards, I think as a country, a better place, right? Where we can have better conversations. But something that I have observed, and maybe you have too, is that in an effort at times to center particular people groups, which, you know, depending on what's going on in the world, uh, needs to happen and needs to be done, certainly needed to be done in 2020 uh, when it came to centering the story of African American people, right? But oftentimes what we don't realize is just because we tend to center or highlight the story or the plight or the happenings or the successes, don't forget the successes and the victories of different kinds of people in the country. That what that doesn't mean for the rest of us is that who we are or our culture or our people group somehow has to be diminished, right? That's actually what we're fighting against. That is actually what historically uh, all of us have had to live into right, in the way that we have talked about uh, cultural come from or the way that we have talked about race. Like, for instance, um, uh, white American majority culture, right, has been sort of how, you know, our country has been set up and things work, um, or at least uh, have been set up with uh, the dominant culture in mind, right? So what that has meant historically is that everybody else's culture here in the United States um, has had to become less or become diminished. And now, this is actually what I love about this time in history, now we are walking into a space where we're saying, no, nobody has to be diminished. But what does need to happen is that the space that we occupy together needs to continue to expand. And I believe that the more diverse your organization becomes, the more diverse your business becomes, that it actually makes more room, not less room for people. Okay, let me say that again. The more diverse culturally, the more multicultural that your organization becomes, it makes more room for people and their cultural come from, not less. It's sort of like um, sometimes when I begin working with people, they can have a faulty idea that, um, you know, if if we talk about uh, culture, if we talk about ethnicity too much, uh, that it's actually going to have a negative effect, not a positive one. And I want to let you know right now, that's just a lie. Um, because it's actually when the organization is more culturally diverse, that it's not that you have uh, necessarily less conversations about it. It's just that the conversations become more normal. Um, And so lots of times people feel like they have to uh, spend less time walking on eggshells with each other, right? Or spend less time 
uh, scared about having cross-cultural uh, conversations about things that matter, right? That what happens is the more diverse that your organization becomes, uh, the more that you are not only talking about cultural matters uh, when it's negative or when negative things happen in the country or something that brings uh, guilt or shame or whatever it is, that you are actually having these conversations uh, with, with a sense of normalcy, which is actually very normal, particularly to non-majority folks. So let me just say that to say that since uh, particularly the summer of 2020, but I think it's, it's kind of been happening for a while, that uh, white American people and white people in particular, I think have approached uh, the conversations uh, on cultural diversity with a degree of silence. Now, let me tell you what I mean. I'm not talking about um, silence with regards to, you know, responding to, again, something awful that happens in the world or something awful that happens in the country. I am talking about uh, what I see is white American people uh, trying to approach the conversation with humility, right, which is great, um, and a great degree of fear uh, that they shouldn't share who they are at all and particularly for the white American man. And what I wanna tell you in the podcast today is that um, if you are a white American man, we need you. I'm gonna say that again, because there are many of you that are listening to me today that have never heard anyone that looks like me from my people group say that to you. But I want you to know that in this movement of greater cultural diversity, of greater, uh, of a great multicultural organization, I want you to know that we need you. We don't need you to dig in your heels. We don't need you to push back so hard that we feel discouraged. We don't need you to um, uh, you know, puff out your chest <laughs> so much that you know that, uh, that we know that you're in control. We don't need that. What we need is you. We need you as a human being. We need you and your thoughts about the world. We need you and how you see the world. And we need you in a state that is ready to receive other people, is ready to be humble, is ready to ask good questions. And what I love about this is that um, in the last handful of years, as I've been working with executives, and you know, I've mentioned this before, that about 99% of my clients are white American men who are CEOs. And what I can tell you is this, and maybe for some of you that listen, this is encouraging, though this will be encouraging to you, is that most of the clients that I work with, the men that I work with, uh, are very, very excited about the potential of what a multicultural organization could look like, right? They, they are asking really good questions. They are asking really good questions of their staff. They are, are listening really well and sharing very well. And so I just want you to know that we need you. You are a, a vital, important part of the work towards greater multicultural uh, diversity come from in your in in your organization and in mind all right so i just want you to know that so here's what i want to share with you today i want to talk to you about the role of white american men in cultural diversity and i want to give you uh three things maybe four but three we'll call it three for now three things to consider as you engage as a white american man um in this conversation now if you're not a white american man um i want to invite you to continue to listen uh, because chances are you know a white American man and <laughs> and you can encourage him or you can pass this along uh, to people that you work with or somebody in your family, okay? So here's the first thing. When you're engaging in the cultural diversity uh, space, uh, you want to keep the mindset and remember that this conversation in this movement is about the collective us, okay? 
uh, that it is, it's not about you personally, individually only. It is about us. It is about the story of us. That is actually what we're building. And so when you're having these conversations, and for some of you, you may not even understand some of the things that you hear because it would be new for you, right? That's okay. This is not like maybe other things in your business, in your organization, where you feel the pressure of having to show up and know the answers, or you feel the pressure of having to show up and, and put on uh, you know, a caricature of, of sorts of what a leader is supposed to look like. We don't need that from you. What we need from you is someone who shows up generous, someone that shows up ready to learn and really willing to share because at your mindset, you know that it is about the collective we. It is about the collective us. If you begin with this mindset, every time you start a conversation, every time you have to jump into even an issue uh, in your business that has happened, right? Because that, that happens sometimes. Anytime that that happens, if you can just, even before you walk into a meeting or somebody comes into your office, just pause, take a deep breath and remind yourself, this is about the collective us. It's not about me personally as a white American man, okay? So just remember that, that's number one. Number two, think about service, not scarcity or survival, okay? Let me say that again. Think about service, not scarcity or survival. Again, when you are engaging in conversations or in the work of cultural diversity, if you can remind yourself that no matter what your role is at work, um, that when you jump into this space, you are jumping into a space of service that will help you with your mindset, that will help you um, lean in instead of show up defensive or lean in instead of showing up like, oh my gosh, let me make sure that I just don't say something that's going to cancel me, right? Because I've met you. I know that that's your fear. <laughs> I know that's your fear. And for some of you, you should be afraid of that because how you have operated up until this point um, here in 2023, that will get you canceled, okay? Um, but I, I, I don't want you to focus on that, but I do want you to focus on just being honest and being real. And that is the movement now towards work is can people show up and be their full selves? And that includes you. That's a good question to ask yourself when you're in these conversations. Think about service and not scarcity. Or survival okay and I want to tell you too these things that I'm sharing with you today you can take um, these principles and these could be the ground rules if you want um, for your conversations on diversity with your team at work right you can take these things that I'm sharing with you with you today and say you know every time we talk about cultural diversity or every time we have a training or whatever it is that these are the rules this is how we're gonna operate around this topic okay here's number three growth over guilt okay growth over guilt um guilt will will lead you to or reveal your insecurity very quickly right guilt will also oftentimes lead you to pride right that's when you want to try to hide and cower um is when you feel guilty about something and, and guilt never moves anybody forward in the way that you need to as an executive in your workplace or as a manager in your workplace. Those things will not move you forward. Instead, uh, we wanna think about growth. And when we think about growth, we wanna think about things such as knowledge and vulnerability, right? Growth is about how do I get better? How do I learn more about this topic, right? The vulnerability piece is how do I uh, continue to learn and how do I continue to share? All right, and there is four things. Here's the fourth thing, okay? Fourth principle here. I want you to think about humility, not hiding. Uh, I'm speaking to you in particular, you uh, who are white American men leading companies, uh, or leading your families, your communities, whatever it is, wherever you are. Um, we do not need you to hide we need you to engage. So again, think about service and humility, right? Many times I find that white American people, uh, because this is what you've been told, you've been told to shut up. 
You've been told, we don't want to hear from you. You've been told, you know, don't ask me any questions, just go read a book. And I'm here to actually tell you completely the opposite. What I'm telling you is, is that you need all of it. Do you need to listen more? Yes. Do you need to learn more? Yes. Do you need to not act like you've been doing cultural diversity work for decades in your company if, if what's true is that you just started it last year? Yes, my God, you need that. <laughs> and you also need to show up and share who you are and share right where you are. Share your vulnerability about what you don't know. You're not going to die. <laughs> You're not going to die. Just show up. Lean into the conversation. Learn and then continue to move forward and continue to grow. Right? Humility, not hiding. You're hiding or you're keeping who you are from the people that you work with in the area of the cultural diversity work that you want to see happen in the company. Hiding all of those things will not get you closer to the result that you are longing to see. It just won't. And I know you've tried this before and it got a little scary and maybe you got your hand slapped. That's okay. You're not dead. <laughs> You're not going to die. The more honest and vulnerable you are in this space, the better off it goes for you. And you start to earn cultural capital with the people around you. So that when you do make a mistake, you get a bit more leeway. When you do make a step make mistake or you do put your foot in your mouth, that people are, are, are way more apt to say, oh, you know, come on, everybody. You know Jack. That's not Jack's heart. Oh, come on, everybody. You know Jim. That's not how Jim really thinks, right? Jim just made a misstep or whatever it is. But trust that humility, not hiding, will get you further than you think it will. Lastly, let me just say this. Thank you for listening today. Um, I just want to say a quick thing about privilege. Um, use your privilege to open opportunities for other people. You can still use it for yourself as well. <laughs> it's not, I mean, it's going to happen no matter what, okay? But also consider how, uh, if you, particularly if you are part of the majority culture in any situation, if you are that, just know you have some sort of privilege privilege. And if you have that privilege, how might you use that to open up opportunities for other people that may not have it in that situation that you find yourself in? Think about that. And you can't go wrong in the engagement. So uh, what I am focusing on this week is those of you that are white American men, we need you. We need you. We don't need you to hide. We don't need you to sulk if you get it wrong. We don't need you to power up. We need you to be you. Vulnerable, humble, learning, just like the rest of us. So let's show up for each other today, all right? Thanks for your trust. Looking forward to the next time. Hey, thanks again so much for listening. You know, I wanted to create a space each week where you and I can learn about different cultures and come forms in a safe, non-threatening, non-embarrassing environment. I hope you enjoy this podcast. For more creative resources and ideas, you can engage with me at NikkiLearner.com.